on History Man 21. Today I had the Battle of Stalingrad. I've kind of lost my voice, so I've tried this as long as I can to make up for that. I haven't done one for a week. Josh. I've been a little bit slack recently because I've been busy. Now back to Stalingrad. The sides the Germans, the Russians, and the Soviets, and the Romanians. Romanians, you may ask. This was Stalingrad, for example. The Romanians were here. The Italians were over here. No, the Spanish were over here. Yeah, they had Spanish volunteers called the Blue Division. And I'm using my camera for this. And the generals. I don't know the Romanian one. I know General Paulus and General Smits. General Paulus was later promoted to field marshal to be the only, the first German field marshal to be captured. Yes, the first the German best, right? field marshal. So, so then, the, the Russians, they, they had General Chakvuf, is quite hard to say, and he led the 62nd Army, which were facing the, the Germans in Stalingrad. Which was really important, and German the Germans made out. Ooh, ooh! This is where the revolution started. It was just an important industrial city. It was proper propaganda wasn't good. It's just basically lies about the enemy. And the 62nd Army were versing the sixth German army, which out of about 250,000, a hundred thousand survived the encirclement and they were prisoners but out of that 70,000 died only 30,000 of them survived in the end which was sad how many survived this mm. it's a bad ordeal now what happened the after the horrible winter in 1941 after the battle of Moscow they retreated in front of Stalingrad and they decided to cross the Volga, which was a major Russian river, which was their last line of defence. And on from Stalingrad was the Volga. If they crossed that, they could have taken Moscow and won the war. So this changed the war along with the Battle of El Alamir, which I'll describe in much more detail later. Sometime I will. Now, I'm starting off this series with this, a few Second World War and kind of Napoleonic Wars. Last time I just had three suspe uh, uh, certain subjects. This time I'm going to do more than that. I just said modern history in the description, so it's going to be all sorts of things. Could be like the race to the moon, the, moon, the Cold War, all this stuff. Submarines. Even vehicles. Now, the Russians, in the end, this was a lot, basically, lots of, yeah, there was lots of blood spilled, lots of people died. The Russians could have lost Stalingrad and the war. So this was really important. In the end, they launched Operation Uranus, which actually kind of didn't work. And they, which they lost over 170,000 casualties. But then they did another uh, Operation Uranus, succeeded by Operation Blue Coat, which the Germans launched to try and encircle the Soviet troops. Failed. Operation Blue Coat. I don't know why they called it Blue Coat. It's interesting. And along the way, lots of people were. were there was actually still quite a few houses which they sheltered in after the winter. And in the end, when the winter came in 1943, a division, a week was surrendering, literally a, a week. Then eventually they reached General Paulus's, Field Marshal Paulus's headquarters. They captured him and General Smith. And Hitler was wondering why didn't they fight on he didn't realize what a bad condition they were in the pocket 
the pocket is where basically they're surrounded by enemy troops and they and they get no supplies, no ammunition, no no guns, no anything. And so they try to fight they try to fight their way out. A few only one, it's recorded, made it out, but then died of the cold. Who broke out of the Stalingrad ground pocket? Only one out of two hundred and fifty thousand. The rest died and they still you can still find them today, their bodies. Also, one bad thing, this is something that wrecked German Blitzkrieg. They bombarded Stalingrad to pieces. So no one so when they brought in their tanks, what happened was all the rubble made the tanks unmaneuverable. So you couldn't move them all over the place. Which wasn't very good. You just moved them all, all, all over the place. But it didn't work. It bogged down the tanks. And the Russians even used old tanks they couldn't move as defense with their big guns. And they still had people in them. And they just went... Pfft. Everything the Russians could, had was used as defense. Now, next part. Who won this? Now, you can tell from how I've been describing it doesn't sound like the Germans won it. The Russians won it. From then onwards, Germany was in retreat other than the Battle of the Krusk, in which they went forward. But that was the last offensive in the same year. Now, when the battle went from, went from October 1942 to February 1943, Yes, yes. It's a long battle. They fought the war. The the war battle would be over by Christmas. It went into the new year. Then they eventually surrendered to the Russians. Yeah, and lots of them were killed, interrogated. Even some four German generals were taught to be like communists. And what they did was they they went against Hitler and it was and eventually after the war one of them was had served 20 years in prison German traitors traitors and the Russians if any of their if any of their soldiers were captured after the war Stalin killed them or sent them off to the lagers which were where they worked for the rest of their life which wasn't very long life. And on the way, they, they they killed quite a lot of Jews on the way to Stalingrad. So this battle changed the war. So now, this was one of the greatest battles of history. And the Russians won it. So now, this has been John History Man 21 signing off yet again. And if you like this video, please leave a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next.